Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, part two of making some homemade baguettes of all the day of uh, with me. I just wanted to show you we've been letting this um, this dough rest for about 45 minutes. Um, you can see how that bad boy has expanded twice the size, um, which is good. It's a good thing. Um, good active yeast. I'm just going to take my little plastic scraper here. We're going to scrape it out. Um, it's got a little bit of flour down here. Um, and I'm going to basically portion this into two pieces. We're going to make two good baguettes out of this. Um, this, again, is where your good old bench scraper comes into play. Um, basically just cutting it. If you want to get an exact amount, um, I don't know if most people have these. I gave one to my parents. Um, but these things are the bomb. I love a scale. Uh, as a matter of fact, in culinary school, 99% of what you do is with grams and uh, grams and weight. It is not done with teaspoons and tablespoons. Um, so just giving you a heads up, uh, it's just the most accurate way of doing anything. So this right here is uh, 1.78 pounds. This one here is 1.86. So I mean, we could take a little bit off of this one and we can put it on with this one here. Um, so 1.82, um, this one here is 1.82, actually perfect. All right, so these are actually good. Um, they're uh, directly cut in half um, as far as that is concerned. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one, we're gonna just put it back in the bowl for right now. We're just gonna work with one of them right now. Um, and essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a little bit of stretch and fold. So basically they would tell you in culinary school, north, south, east, west, north, south, east, west. All right, and basically all we're doing is just stretching that dough, um, working the dough. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to go ahead and get this bad boy shaped up to a baguette. Now, if you guys have been to the grocery store and you've bought a baguette, you know, they're, I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 18 inches long, <clears throat> depending on the size of one that you get. Um, they're kind of pointed on the end um, um, on both sides. So we're going to, I'll show you guys how to do that. We're just going to. Kind of flatten this dough out just a little bit. Um, we're going to stretch it back over to pinch it on the bottom side over here. All right. And we're just going to start to roll this dough. And as we roll it, we're going to taper it on the bottoms or on the edges here. I'm sorry, not the bottoms, but um, we're just going to work it. We're going to work it. Um, keep in mind, dough, especially um, a fresh dough, is really, really elastic. So you've got to work the dough, get it to a shape, and then let it sit, and then you can come back and reshape it again, all right? Um, uh, another thing that I've been doing is when we put these in the oven, we're going to be um, cooking these bad boys at about 400, 415 degrees. Um, uh, I'll show you guys how to steep, uh, stipple um, your dough. Um, that prevents your dough from actually bursting. Uh, when it's actually cooking in the oven, believe it or not, there can be air pockets. Um, so when the dough is actually cooking in the oven, it can actually burst open and then it's just, it, it just looks horrible. So a stipple is where you basically take a sharp knife. Um, they actually have a stippler that you can use. It looks almost kind of like a razor blade. Um, and you basically make your lines across your dough and it, it kind of like a, at an angle. And basically it gives the dough a place to break. Um, so it doesn't mess up, but um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work these dough uh, Both of these pieces out um, This is going to be um, My first one that I'm going to do I'm going to let it rest for a little bit and then I'm going to come back and do it again All right, so uh, just bear with me I'm gonna get both of them done and let these bad boys rest and then I'll be right back All right guys, so I'm kind of see here um, you know, I've got it kind of elongated out. Um, we still have to let this proof again. Um, at least, at least another 30 to 45 minutes, you're going to let these bad boys proof again. Um, if you don't have a proofing oven, which most people don't, um, then the best thing you can do is like put it up on top of your cabinets. And usually I put them above the refrigerator. Um, just the heat off of the refrigerator kind of makes it, um, um, they, they, they actually, it helps it to proof. So I've got these liners, um, that I use. I bought a couple of half sheet pans and they come with these, um, these kind of like, uh, plastic or rubbery type liners. And that's what I use. Um, kind of put them in there at an angle. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them sit. 
for about 30 to 45 minutes um, above the refrigerator and then kind of go from there. Um, and then I will uh, bring you guys back on once these, get, these bad boys get done proofing, okay? Um, all right, I'll talk to you guys soon.